during my time in the military, during my life since I was 18 to 42, I've done a lot of drug counseling. A lot of drug counseling. A lot. Completely uncertified. I tried to go to drug counseling because I, I wanted to volunteer. And uh, I think they misread my signs as somebody who was a secret addict. But the truth was is that I, I did have a secret, but I wanted to understand my secret better. And uh, my secret is is that I was a NCO for like 13 years. 12, 13 years I was an NCO. <laughs> um, and I've had troops and even supervisors, and even colleagues or friends, and people that were not at all in the military, just spouses and friends, who were addicted to a lot of things that were legal, like Ambien. Like I've had troops that were chronically late to work because they were on Ambien, and when we talked about it for weeks, they wound up being on time and they got off Ambien. But they never went to a drug counselor because what they were doing was legal. I've, I've had a troop who told me that his penis didn't work because he was taking too many um, antidepressants. And the reason he was taking antidepressants is because his penis didn't work. So he talked to his counselor and he reduced his prescriptions and his penis stopped, started to work again. And eventually him and his wife, I think, decided that he did need the pills. So when I went to drug counseling after the military as someone who already used THC with a prescription medically had an ordination in a non-denominational church that might be small but also acknowledges the use of medicinal THC as chaplains and everything else having an ordination doing all those things other people might have thought I was the addict instead of the person who wanted to learn how to talk to heroin addicts <laughs> instead of police officers that were addicted to Ambien. Because I've been counseling police and firefighters who were addicted and found out that their wives wanted to leave them because their penis stopped working. Like, those are the people I used to talk to. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> that's a different type of counseling. And uh, it can get really dangerous. Because, like, you learn even in most excellent way, like, you're supposed to offer people that are traumatic or whatever. You're supposed to offer them Jesus. Well, like I told my son in familial discipleship, as an adult, it's kind of your job as the parent to be Jesus until that person, being the child, can know Jesus for themselves and can make their own decisions. Um, when you talk to an ambient addict about the real world, and get them to stop taking the red pill so that they can see the blue sky. Um, but you do it in a very productive way because you want to rescue their career. Even though it hasn't even started or it's about to end. But you know they're going to kill themselves when they retire. Um, if you haven't had all those types of experiences, those are just different. Okay? Um, when you talk to somebody and you get them to stop taking a little yellow helper though. Uh, sometimes they confuse you for somebody else. It's very easy to be confused for somebody else or something else. Many people are confused. I've met many other people that do the exact same thing that I do, which is just like, why are you doing that? Like, why are you drinking so many of those energy drinks? Because that's legal too. There's a lot of people that ask why that has nothing to do with beer or heroin. Because I was a federal law enforcement officer. and We would have... Our parties looked like frat parties, but they had babysitters. Our parties looked like fraternities having conventions sometimes. But the kids were... We had, we had telephone recall lists. <laughs> Before the party started, we had telephone recall lists. 
so that if you got shit faced, you still had a printout in your pocket for how to un-F yourself. Like, that's how we used to party. Sometimes, though, when we did those, I was the guy in the weird corner that would wander off with somebody and we talked for like five hours about their dad. And then when we were both sober, we just pretended we never talked about it. There's just, there's, there's a type of chaplaincy that people just don't acknowledge. That's all.